everybody's friend It's Tyler It's your only black friend Because your best black friend I wouldn't trade him for another black friend Cause black friends are rare as you should be aware He's mopping Richard Pryor So just sit and stare It's everybody's friend It's Tyler It's everybody's friend It's Tyler Hey guys, Tyler here. So for this video, I will be responding to a clip that was done by the Berkeley School of Law that talks about the five misconceptions about critical race theory. And so without further hesitation, let us respond to the video. Critical race theory at its very base is a legal theory. It's a, it's a theory about the relationship between law and racial inequality. Um, critical race theory emerged in law schools in the 1970s and 1980s um, in order to sort of figure out why the Civil Rights Act of 1964 um, did not achieve everything that we thought it was going to achieve. We thought it was going to achieve racial justice. We thought it was going to achieve racial equality. We thought it was at least going to achieve racial integration. Um, and none of those things were happening. So that being said, in order for critical race theory to be taught in K through 12 schools, kindergartners through 12th graders would have to have some knowledge of the law. They would have to have some knowledge of uh, jurisprudence of the Supreme Court's case law of Congress and how Congress works, etc. K through 12 students don't have that knowledge. And so as a matter of definition, critical race theory is not being taught um, in K through 12 schools. Well, it's technically true, that they're not literally teaching like the kids like you know book to book and study for study about law and critical race theory in front of their faces there's also another side to this whole entire argument when people say that they're teaching critical race theory to kids from k to 12 what they really mean is that they're using the principles directly from critical race theory and applying it to the classrooms. Now, what are the principles for critical race theory? Now, according to the list that was comprised by the, one of the co-creators of the theory named uh, Richard D'Angelo, he basically states that critical race theory is consistent of, you know, having some sort of critique of liberalism, which means stuff like, you know, color blindness is one of them, as well as this whole entire idea of meritocracy. Another example of it is also promoting the idea of black nationalism and black separatism. Another example, of course, of this whole entire principles for critical race theory is the ideas of intersectionality and how things intersect with different kinds of identities for people. One final component for critical race theory is the idea of valuing storytelling over objectivity, meaning that if you were to believe the stories in the first hands of council minorities or people of color, that is more valuable than to actually, of course, try to, you know, search for some sort of objective truth, which is insane. Now, before someone says that intersectionality is not critical race theory, literally the author, Kimberly Cronstraw, actually said that it came directly from the whole entire series. So, if the whole freaking original authors actually said out loud that she got it from Critical Race Theory, I'm pretty damn sure that we should probably take it for granted that it is from Critical Race Theory. Now, getting back to my main point, there are literally tons and tons of leaked documents where various schools are applying the same sort of principles as listed by one of the co-authors by uh, Richard D'Angelo into the classroom curriculum, both for like the students as well as to train the teachers to think in a certain way for critical race theory. Besides the slideshows, there are also various Zoom calls across the internet and even some TikToks to give you guys an example. So this comment right here is asking me to explain um, why not wanting critical race theory in the classroom is racist. Thank you for asking me this question. I'd love to explain it. So critical race theory talks about how the systems that we have, the laws that we have, um, how all of those are designed to oppress people groups. 
things like mass incarceration, the prison industrial system, the military industrial system, all of those are used to oppress people groups. By teaching this in the classroom, we can show our kids what systems need to be challenged and thought about differently. Racism isn't going to be fixed by me going down to a kid right here and saying, hey buddy, you really need to be nicer to that kid over there even though they look a little bit different than you. We can dismantle racism by dismantling systems of oppression, not by being nice to people. When you don't want to teach future generations about how these systems were designed to oppress people, you're taking the side of the oppressor, being racist. This is what's bullshit. Today is the first time our country has recognized Juneteenth as a national holiday, and yet I'm getting ready to go back to school in the fall, and my governor has put into place some ridiculous legislation that many governors across the country have put into place, such as I can't teach anything divisive, I can't teach critical race theory, and I can't teach about racial equity. This is at all public schools, colleges, and universities. So, teachers, <clears throat> in the past, We've been activists. After this shit show of last year, we really need to stand up and do what's right for our kids right now. So this is a call to action, teachers. We gotta stand up and fight for our kids because this is bullshit. We can't lie to them. White kids, you're all racist. There's literally nothing you can do about it. Just get really good at apologizing. You know what, as your teacher, I really know each and every one of you really well, and I know your hearts, but it's really important to understand that you can be like not racist as an individual, but still exist within a system that perpetuates racial disparities. And there's no need for any of us to feel bad about it, but we do need to accept that it exists and acknowledge it, and then try to challenge those disparities when we can. White kids, you're privileged. You've never had to work for anything in your life. Stop complaining. Privilege actually isn't like the existence of benefits. It's the lack of obstacles and barriers. So you've had to work really hard for a lot of things in your life and you've had to overcome obstacles. It's just probably that the color of your skin wasn't one of them. The laws are racist, the constitution is racist, America's racist. Thankfully, we eliminated most of like the explicitly racist legislation and institutions during the 60s and the civil rights movement, but we're a democracy, right? And so our institutions are run by people and people come to their life with experiences and biases. And so the institutions that they run probably carry those as well. So is critical race theory really being taught in school? I guess technicalities, they're using the principles for schools, but as far as the literal, I guess, teaching from a book and stuff, I guess not, unless you're in like a law school. But again, all of this is just some sort of word game to actually prove a point, even though they're literally using their principles on students and on teachers. Critical race theory is not diversity and inclusion trainings. The funny, not funny thing is that critical race theorists have offered incredibly insightful critiques of both the language of diversity and inclusion, as well as the idea um, that you can fix racial inequality by offering these discrete trainings in corporations or in institutions. Diversity and inclusion, that language, um, allows us to talk about um, all the benefits that people of color might bring to environments without talking about the racial disadvantage um, that has prevented people of color from entering into these institutions in the first place. And then the idea of trainings, um, you know, corporations, institutions use these trainings as kind of like a way to purport to do something about racial inequality, but then go back to the status quo and never really do a self-study of their own policies and their own practices that make it difficult for people of color to thrive in these institutions. So all of that to say, critical race theory is not diversity and inclusion training. If critical race theory is not part of diversity training, please explain to me why is it that every single time I look at some sort of leaked documents or Zoom calls, there are always slideshows that literally say critical race theory as a part of them. Critical race theory is largely uninterested in focusing on actors, be they good actors or bad actors. 
Critical race theory is a social theory. It recognizes that racism is a social problem. And so it's really interested in focusing on institutions, structures, systems, processes, assumptions, discourses, narratives, right? These large macro processes that um, have made it so that our country is racially unequal. And because it is a social theory and it's because it is largely focused on macro processes, it doesn't, it doesn't really pay much attention to in, you know individuals um, who are sort of constrained by those processes. So it doesn't vilify, vilify any group, um, be it white people or non-white people. It doesn't victimize any group, um, be they white people or non-white people. Again, it is focused on you know larger, larger forces in our society that make it so that our, our country is a racially stratified one. Actually, critical race theory is very, very harsh against white people. Robert D'Angelo, the very same guy who helped with critical race theory with these other people, including Kimberly Kempstraw, actually developed this whole entire idea of whiteness study. And because of whiteness studies, we have stuff like, you know, white fragility and all these sort of places. We have whiteness is a plague according to one sort of, you know, research paper. And this whole entire idea of white privilege, again, comes directly, goes back to this whole idea of just whiteness studies. Besides the obvious example of Robert D'Angelo basically saying that all white people are racist, again, we have the other example with the whiteness chart which pretty much lists things like the scientific method, the family unit, as well as individualism, and other kind of stuff as pure evidence of whiteness culture. And also there is this other example, which basically states that whiteness is a parasite for the entire planet. One final example that I have for you guys is this white teenager who basically has a troubled past yeah, for some strange reason, she apparently benefits from this sort of idea of white privilege. I have been in counseling as long as I can remember because I was adopted from foster care at age four. The things I have learned along the way are being challenged now when my science or math teacher is trying to teach me how to be emotionally. And why are they teaching me about sexuality and how to identify. I don't want to hear about sexuality during class in front of other students because that should be a private thing. This should be left in the homes in between students and counselors or one-on-one -on -one conversations. This has been a very traumatic part of my past and the more the school focuses on sexuality, the more it affects me and my anxiety. It leaves confusion and frustration in my mind and I don't know how to deal with that because they only focus on more content I feel hurt about. For example, I was told I have white privilege. How can a child born in an abusive drug and alcohol abuse home who lost her entire biological family that has experienced all forms of abuse and neglect be privileged? If you found a child at 15 months in a home with holes in the floor eating cat poop, would you consider them privileged? Just asking because when I was told that I was told that I was so upset I cried myself to sleep. We have to stop the stereotypes and bitterness towards groups because it gets us nowhere but divided. I have no friends and can say HSC again has failed me. They are trying to divide us into two groups instead of bringing us together as one. Every day I felt less and less valued as a student and failed every class this past year. Academics are Demics are not important in here, only how we feel and making sure we learn about sexuality, political topics, and emotional topics that teachers may or may not be able to handle, especially with trauma children like myself. I'm happy to move on and begin a fresh start and hope that this next school will love me for me and challenge me to grow in areas that I am good at. I just want people to love one another and the way we are doing it is wrong. Thank you for your time. When I watched that video for the first time, I just cannot imagine the amount of abuse that she kind of felt 
when she was called that she has some sort of white privilege. Because this whole entire idea, well, not literally, literally, literally taught, but applied in the school curriculum for the students, it seems as though that it's being used to justify further racial tensions among the students just because somebody has a different skin color. This here is kind of why parents are pretty much concerned about critical race theory being applied, not just schools by the way, and pretty much almost every aspect of American society, from the government, to the schools, to private businesses, everywhere, right? This is kind of why people are concerned. I don't necessarily care whether stuff that's being implied in school is not real critical race theory. What I really care, whether you call it critical race theory or not, is how people are being openly discriminated just because they're race. You can sit here and just play all these sort of word games as you want to. But at the end of the day, can you all not agree that the stuff that is being taken place by the stuff that I just mentioned earlier, that is not okay at all? Really? Well, first of all, critical race theory is not being taught in K through 12 schools, but um, what the GOP lawmakers are really interested in is sort of preventing any talk about race at all in schools. And so the idea here is talking about race um, causes division along racial lines. And that's just not true. I don't think most people who oppose critical race theory are opposed to the idea of just talking about race at all. As a matter of fact, most people, in fact, want students to know about American history, want them to know about what happened with slavery, what happened with the discrimination of Asian people and these other sort of minority groups. Of course, people have no problem teaching this sort of stuff towards kids because if you learn about history, of course, you will not repeat it. And so I think it's actually a good idea to teach students and everybody else about history, both the good stuff and the not so good stuff. That said though, I do in fact believe that stuff like whiteness, the idea of, you know, not using colorblindness, which is insane, this sort of idea that we should not have some sort of meritocracy and whatnot, that to me is crazy talk. There is a difference to me between wanting to talk about, of course, what happened historically, and then calling somebody like some sort of white privileged girl just because she has a different skin color. And that to me is the main reason why so many of us are opposed to it. And by the way, of course you said in the video that it's the GOP Republicans who are out against this sort of stuff by banning it in schools. I don't think it's necessarily a partisan issue. I think people, no matter their background, no matter if they're blue or red, they actually actively are against it. So this whole entire issue to me is not necessarily partisan. This whole entire issue is very bipartisan. Um, the country is already divided along racial lines. The country is already incredibly segregated. Our schools are segregated. Our neighborhoods are segregated. Our hospitals are segregated. Our churches are segregated. And critical race theory didn't do that. Like we didn't create the division along racial lines. And you wanna know why they're segregated for like a lot of these places? That's because literally social justice activists openly call for the segregation of the races. Literally in college campuses, go to college campus. Only black only centers at college campuses. Or how there's one time there was literally some sort of poster that says like people of color only and white only. And so yes, I do in fact put the blame on social justice activists 
who openly states that we need black only spaces and stuff. So yes, yes, it's actually true. I guess they're motivated by anti-racism for the cause. The way he have, we have organized society created those divisions along racial lines and what, what critical race theory is trying to do is to fix it is to make us make this country live up to the promises um, that are contained in our constitution that are contained in our anti-discrimination laws so critical race theory is actually trying to heal the divisions that we have in this country that exist along racial lines if that's the case that critical race theory wants to uphold everything within the constitution i want to have like anti-discrimination laws why is it then that, of course, that the whole entire premise of critical race theory was literally based upon something called critical theory, which in turn was based upon the ideas of the Frankfurt School, which has basis in Marxism. Instead of the bourgeoisie and the proletariat, you get the oppressor, which is the white people, and the oppressed, which is the whole entire purpose for the black people to stay oppressed and stay down because apparently critical theory thinks that way. Yes, critical race theory has roots in Marxism and Marxism is antithetical to this whole entire purpose of wanting to maintain the constitution, wanting to freaking maintain anti-discrimination laws. <laughs> so crazy. I'll just say that our kids, I think that we insult our kids' intelligence when we think that they can't handle hearing about the hard truths of our nation. We diminish how smart they are, how insightful they are, how perceptive they are when we propose that they can't learn about our history and they can't learn about our present, even though it might be um, difficult to hear. Our kids are strong enough. Um, and again, I think that we need to uh, respect their strength, and expose them to ideas um, that, are, that are true. These are just simple truths. <laughs> again, critical race theory is not the same as American history. I'm just curious, why is it that people who support this ideology always say that if you remove critical race theory, you remove American history? That just does not make any sort of freaking sense. But anyway, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.